which is going to be increasing or to say this is going to be uh, decreasing the uric acid levels in the body treatment of chronic gout. Out of this we have explained two different concepts drugs which is decreasing the synthesis increasing the excretion let's first target about drugs which is decreasing the synthesis of uric acids. The first and the foremost famous drug is what? Allopurinol right what's the mechanism of action? We know that we have two different pathways de novo pathway and salvage pathway in the synthesis of purines but here I'm going to talk about only one major mechanism in this salvage pathway and that is hypoxanthin is broken down to xanthin. Xanthin is broken down to uric acid. Both of these steps is catalyzed by the same enzyme xanthin oxidase enzyme. This allopurinol is a drug which tends to inhibit this xanthin oxidase enzyme. When given at low doses, it behaves as a competitive reversible inhibitor. But when given at high doses, it is going to be non-competitive irreversible inhibitor. Dose-dependent inhibition, that's what it means. It tends to produce dose-dependent inhibition of this xanthin oxidase enzyme. We have some classical features of allopurinol, guys. The first point is it tends to reduce the size of already established TOFI. It decreases both serum uric acid levels and urine uric acid levels. This is the point which is actually important one as per your uh, case scenario which I was explaining before. In this case scenario which I have explained before, those patients who came for the general health checkup, he told that he was under anti medications and the urine uric acid levels was very much higher. Which means the patient was in treatment with an anti medication but that drug has decreased the serum uric acid but increased the urinary uric acid levels. Whereas allopurinol decreases both serum and urinary uric acid levels, which means we can clearly strike off allopurinol from that option. Also, we can strike off colchicin. I hope you remember that colchicin was also an option there. Colchicin has got no role in decreasing the uric acid or increasing the uric acid. It is purely an anti-inflammatory agent, so we can easily strike it off. Let's move towards the next two options after we explain the uricose uric agents. The next point regarding allopurinol, it tends to inhibit reperfusion injury. It is useful in terms of renal failure and also renal stones because it is not primarily dependent on kidneys for its function to be performing. It is purely based on the enzyme inhibition which happens in every individual cells in the body. It not only inhibits this pathway, it also inhibits the de novo purine synthesis. It can also be used for leash nahan syndrome. We know what is leash nahan syndrome is. A patient with uh, hyperuricemia, mental retardation, self-mutilation. The classical triad of leash nahan syndrome. And in terms of hyperuricemia, we can use allopurinol in those conditions. What are the adverse effects of allopurinol? Most common one, GI related is the most common one. Some patients might develop dermatitis, skin related reactions. They have a separate syndrome called as allopurinol hypersensitivity syndrome. Very, very rare adverse effect. Don't uh, think that it's going to be a common one. It's very rare, but some cases have been reported. This allopurinol hypersensitivity syndrome is characterized by hepatitis, Desquamating erythematous rash and worsening renal function. Kidney will be gone, skin will be gone, and liver will be gone. Hepatitis, desquamating erythematous rash, and worsening renal function. Some patients again might produce orotic aciduria because allopurinol additionally inhibits orotidylate decarboxylase enzyme. Because of that, patient might land up in orotic aciduria.